Hello, Timberwolves fans, and welcome to Timberwolves Explosion. That's right, Timberwolves Explosion. This is episode number one, the original episode for the new Timberwolves podcast here on the sportstuff.com, and I couldn't be more excited. As some of you know, this is my favorite team in the world, and I'm just thrilled to be the host of this show and to get this thing rocking and rolling here on the sportstuff.com and also this will be available on iTunes uh probably not right off the bat but I'm sure it will be uh soon as soon as it's uh show is registered on iTunes possibly by episode 2 maybe even by this one it just depends we'll see how things go now as i said before we are on the sportstuff.com that is the host site for this show and uh we do have a message boards on the sportstuff.com. And uh, to get there, click on the little button that says TSS Boards in the upper right-hand corner of the main page. Simply click on that and sign up. Where that way you can interact with all of us podcasters and all of us other members of TSS. There's about 200 of us, and we'd like to get more and more and more. It would be awesome, and um, it just makes it funner. The more, the merrier. As again, it is 100% free and 100% fun. As that is my famous quote pretty much on my other podcasts. So, uh, yeah. Now, Timberwolves Explosion, of course, is exclusive to the Timberwolves. And, um, I used to have a show called Paladino Live, as a lot of you knew that. Um, I had about 21 episodes and I decided to split it up into two shows. Now, this one is Timberwolves Explosion. This is one of them, and the other is Brave the Wild, as uh, we'll talk into that about that one shortly, is, of course, the Minnesota Wild. Uh, no more Twins Talk, as we do have a Twins podcast on this show, a station anyway, called TC Talk, hosted by Andrew Gotsman. Definitely give him a look. He's more than worth it. Now, uh, also, we do have a call-in line on the sportsstuff.com, but it is down. It is currently down, unfortunately. So it's just one of those things that there's nothing we can do about it right now, but it will be up and running again soon. So bear with us. And with that, we'll be right back, and we're going to get into a big Glenn Taylor article from the Star Tribune. What's up, listeners? This is Farzine. I am the host of the Chiefs End Zone Show right here on the sportsstuff.com, where we cover the Kansas City Chiefs, give our opinions, and... Go deep inside with the Kansas City Chiefs right here, only on the sportsstuff.com. We encourage you Chiefs fans, you loud Chiefs fans out there, to get on the show, voice your opinions, get on our boards, and talk with us. All listeners, including Bronco fans, are allowed in our show. So be sure you check out the Chiefs End Zone Show right here on the sportsstuff.com with me, your host, Farzine. And we are back here on Timberwolves Explosion. And, man, does it feel good saying that. Finally a Wolves show for all of you. And, uh, of course, it's finally a show I get to host. It's just very exciting to be here, as I've said already before. But I just, <laughs> I'm just, I'm thrilled, as you can tell. So at least you'll know you'll have a host that absolutely loves what he's doing. Now, there was a huge article in the Star Tribune, oh, a couple days ago, August the 11th. Uh, today, by the way, is the 13th of August, Wednesday the 13th of August, uh, if I didn't mention that earlier. So that would have made it Monday, of course. Aren't you happy? Now, the headline of the article, Glenn Taylor moving forward in a return to yesteryear. Now, the meaning of this is because, uh, well, with Kevin Garnett being traded, the uh, Timberwolves are looking to start over, of course, as you probably figured by now. And, of course, the uh, the original plan that they had in place, kind of the young nucleus of players. Well, right now, Glenn Taylor believes that, that we have a similar deal right now as to, oh, let's say circa 1996-97, you know, when you had Kevin Garnett and Stephon Marbury, where the Wolves had not made the playoffs yet, but maybe this is the year that they get better and make the playoffs. And, of course, they did that year, thankfully, and there was a lot of buzz in this town. And I mean a lot of buzz. I mean, Stefan Marbury made me so excited, so excited 
I just couldn't believe it. You know, having him along with Kevin Garnett, the, you know, the the chosen one, so to speak, the the Anakin Skywalker of the Timberwolves. Uh, we got to hope that uh, that El Jefferson is the Luke Skywalker, the one that actually does, you know, <laughs> the one that doesn't uh, get selfish and. Uh, in my in my opinion, care more about money than about winning. Uh, I I just there are too many reasons to believe that Kevin Garnett was more interested in money than winning because he refused to lower his salary. You know, obviously, like take a lesser contract. You can't renegotiate a deal in the NBA. Of course, it's guaranteed. So before you hate mongers, come after me on that one. <laughs> but uh, yeah, um, Kevin Garnett wanted like about. 18, 20 million a year pretty much when he was a kid. You know, when he was still a kid. Al Jefferson signs for 65 million. Oh, about half of what Garnett did. So that's a start. A little more Jedi in uh, Al Jefferson. Uh, so that's good news there. Um, obviously no guarantee that he's going to be as good as Garnett and no guarantee that he's going to stay as unselfish. So, <laughs> or that he's going to be as unselfish as he appears at this point. But, uh, Yes, Timberwolves officials pretty excited the way things are going right now. Um, basically, in this article, they talk about how Kevin McHale ultimately wasn't really trained for the business operations of this team, like, say, the, the salary cap and such, before, you know, before he was hired. So there you go. I <laughs> So now they're saying he pretty much has learned all the all – the, uh, Trick to the trade. And um, I sure hope he has. Uh, lately, of course, the the trades that he's made, they talk about that in here. The trades that he's made have been more savvy, more salary cap savvy. Of course, that big Mike Miller trade sets, it up, sets us up for the year 2010. And uh, by that point in time, we will be anywhere from, oh, 15 to 25 million under the cap, you know, with the likelihood of, Continued signings, you know, um, and of course, well, the Ryan Gomes signing, the Craig Smith signing, and the uh, Sebastian Telfer signing. Now, Gomes's deal, really none of these deals, <laughs> of course, necessarily will go through 2010. Craig Smith's does not yet. Telfer's maybe, that's a player's option. And, uh, yeah, Gomes maybe, you know, those are obviously team options. So, yeah, there is more savviness to... Kevin McHale this time around, as we are starting over, of course, as they're saying. Um, there is a sign that they've at least learned something. You know, they're accumulating draft picks. As uh, Glenn Taylor in here continuing to be very excited about that, how the Wolves have accumulated first-round pick after first-round pick after first-round pick. And, of course, you know, you need to also have good players to go along with that. I mean, that's how the Boston Celtics were able to make the trades that they did. And all of a sudden, bam, you got, you know, the big three all over again and a world championship. No guarantee that's going to happen here, of course, but you never know. I mean, you got to do something right. And by gum, they might actually be doing a thing or two right, finally. As, uh, of course, the Marbury issue, the Terrell Brandon contract. I mean, it just goes on and on. And on and on. You know, of course, Troy Hudson. Who could forget that? Marco Yarish. Who could forget that? Uh, Mark Blunt, we didn't sign him, but we traded for him. We traded an expiring contract in Michael Lolo County for Mark Blunt. I just, I love that. Just love it. Um, whatever, though. <laughs> at least we're not in that kind of situation now. Or at least so we hope. You know, we, we just really hope that won't come up again. Um, now about Kevin Garnett winning a championship, Glenn Taylor's response is, I didn't feel jealous, said Taylor, who said he left a congratula congratulatory phone messages for Garnett that went unreturned. I was happy for Kevin. Do I say, gee, why wouldn't that, why couldn't that happen here? Yes, but I don't harbor bad feelings against anybody. So, <laughs> that an NBA title was, my goal, and you had him here, so it seems like it was the best chance of having a person of that caliber. We tried to bring him, to bring people in around him, but quite frankly, the last couple of years, we were going nowhere. Now, I agree with that. I agree. Uh, the Wolves were going nowhere, 
And um, that's why they had to do this plan. They had to start over, and uh, that's why I was on board with it. So, yes, as your Timberwolves podcast host, I was on board with the Kevin Garnett trade because I want the team to win. I want there to be a plan. The plan was over, folks, 110% over. The guys turning to be, the guys becoming 31, 32 years old were winning 33 games. It, not gonna, it's just not working out anymore. You know, guys like Ricky Davis and Marco Yarich, as I mentioned, Hudson, blah, 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 Trenton Hassel. You know, you gotta start over and virtually every one of them is gone. So that's just the way it goes. And, of course, now when they talk about just one one thing after another in retrospect of, uh, you know, the Glenn Taylor's 14 years with the Wolfies, they had to bring up the dreaded Joe Smith deal. Now here it says, in his 14 years in the league, he has been punished and trusted unlike any other owner by NBA Commissioner David Stern. Taylor's secretive illegal signing of free agent Joe Smith in 1999 cost the team an unprecedented five first-round picks a $3.5 million fine, and crippled the franchise seemingly in perpetuity. Now, of course, the penalty was later reduced to three first-rounders, and it does mention that. And, yeah, we're lucky about that, (laughs) as the third year was returned and the fifth year was returned. So when that whole ditty ended, it was nice. But you know what, folks? Ever heard this saying? Too little, too late. The damage had been done. The draft, the draft picks that were available were, <laughs> that were taken were very poor. The Paul Grants, and of course, Indy Eby was that third one in there, the 2004 pick, that just, or three pick, that just sucked. But yeah, the damage had been done. You know, the other years, picks that we could have had were gone. Picks that could have helped Garnett, gone. And, uh, it's just one thing after another, of course, and it's a shame. As you can only hope that this time around we can get this thing right. Now, in this part of the article, Glenn Taylor talks about the potential mistakes. Here we go. I quote, I don't defend myself and I don't defend Kevin and say mistakes haven't been made, Taylor said. People think I'm way too loyal to Kevin and I should replace him. Maybe I'm really pretty loyal and maybe I get a little stubborn in my loyalty, but that Loyalty probably goes into all my businesses. It isn't that people haven't lost me a million dollars on some decision before. There are Those are the same people who sometimes really make good decisions. If I worried about Kevin's integrity, he wouldn't be here for a minute. If I worried about whether he really cared or not, those are the things that are critical to me. I know he doesn't do anything bad because he's lazy or because he's not intelligent. He takes risks, and he has been wrong on some of those risks. If I knew somebody who could make it right all the time, I wouldn't have any trouble having that person work for me. Now, I guess I think the loyalty does come at a fault with in that deal. Uh, Mikhail, though, has improved. I have to admit he has improved, but does it need to take 12, or 12 to 14 years for him to improve? Does it need to take a franchise player's career being wasted for that proof? Now, of course, the franchise player did not become the go-to guy you expect, but that's why you, as the general manager and the owner, acknowledge that, despite if this man, this franchise player, might get slightly offended with you going up to him and saying, we are going to bring in somebody who is more of a you know, give me the damn ball and get out of my way type to go with you, you know, if it offends him too bad. You know, I mean, you got to win, right? I mean, isn't that the number one goal in this in any sport? So the Wolves did not acknowledge that, that um, that thing, that, that major deal that was lacking with the Wolves. They needed to get a guy who could hit, take and make shots late in the game, and they never had it. So, Okay. Now maybe they will, maybe, but I'm not convinced they have that yet. As this article just very in-depth and kind of all over the place, I mean, I apologize if the topics are kind of being spread all over the place, but that's what this article is. It is all over the place. Um, 
Now, in this little area, he talks about the, the buying players out here. He said, quote, practice hard, play hard, be good, and all that type of stuff. Taylor said, describing his team's reclamation vision, reclamation vision, after it bought out or traded away bloated contracts belonging to Troy Hudson, Mark Perlon, Mike James. How can I forget Mike James? Uh, ha, Marco Yarish, and then signed the youngsters Ryan Gomes, Craig Smith, and Sebastian Telfer to reasonable short-term deals, which is something the Wolves should have done with Troy Hudson, Mike James, and Marco Yarich. Yes, absolutely. What was the point of signing Troy Hudson to a six-year deal? You know, I mean, they didn't sign Mark Blunt, they, but they traded an expiring contract for a four-year, four or five years remaining on the deal. Mike James, why would you sign Mike James to a four-year deal after a <laughs> you see, it's just so many after a, like, one good year, and it was at the Raptors, Yahoo, you know, Marco Yarich. Why would you give Marco Yarich a six-year deal? What are you thinking? Seriously. So it's things like that. It's just, it's about time that they finally have a plan in place. More intelligent salary cap contracts, you know. Um, a more, you know, a more salary cap sound franchise player in Al Jefferson. 65 million versus 125 million. I mean, hello, that's only 60 million dollars less. Was Al Jefferson as ex- as exciting or hyped at you know at, at the age he is now that Garnett was? No, but still, you got to be reasonable here. And it's a shame that things weren't more reasonable in the past. It was all just, oh my God, you know, we have this guy, we gotta we gotta open the moon to him. But um, okay, whatever. Now, uh, it's just the con- article continues here. To get there, Taylor has made his voice heard more often in staff meetings, and he has surrounded McHale with assistants Jim Stack, Rob Babcock, Fred Hoiberg, and Zarko Durisic in an attempt to foster more discussion. Now, Zarko Durisic must be new because I, <laughs> I'm a fairly strong follow, you know, very <laughs> Attentive follower of the Wolves, and uh, I tend to stay that way. And I don't know who this guy is, so it's got to be some new hire along the way or, a, you know, a new project. But, yeah, anyhow, better decisions and allow McHale, who had no management training, as I mentioned, mm-hmm, when he agreed to lead the Wolves 13 years ago to learn from his errors. So now basically, yeah, they're saying how there's more more heads, like four heads are better than one, or actually five in this case. And, yeah, we need that right now. Again, Taylor quotes here on this topic. I asked him to help me out, and he jumped in. It's a learning process. You've got to give him the tools, the people around him who challenge him, who will question him earlier in that process. We have done that, and he has not fought that. Some people fight that type of thing. We sit down as a group now, as a group now, and I'm telling you that they don't always agree with Kevin, and Kevin doesn't always agree with them. But I think the results are better. They're coming up with better conclusions. Now, here's the thing. Why didn't they do that before? Do you really have to blow a whole generation of players, you know, of potential, like a a whole nucleus away, blow that entire opportunity away? And that's what it takes for you to learn. So that that's the kind of stuff that's a, that's a bit frustrating. But at least they are learning. The Clippers haven't. The wolves are learning. That's the one thing. It, but still, I forgive me for getting upset when I bring that up about how they. Yeah, it took the whole 13 years to do. And uh, it also mentions in time Taylor Hitty spe- expects that Hoiberg will replace Mikhail when Mikhail decides it's time to step away. So yeah, we're gonna have to see what happens at that. I think Fred Hoiberg has a chance to be a pretty good. Um, Vice President of Basketball Operations for the Wolves. Right now, of course, he's the assistant GM. I like the way the guy thinks. I like what he says when he does go on the radio and his quotes in the newspaper. I That doesn't mean he's going to be a great general manager or great whatever, but I think he's got some potential. And, of course, a change of face would be nice at some point sooner rather than later. Um, <laughs> it's just at least... The encouraging thing is here that they have learned from their mistakes. It took a hell of a lot of mistakes and a hell of a lot of years and a lot of pain for us fans, but at least this franchise appears they are learning. Now let's just hope that this second generation, you know, this new nucleus, the Al Jefferson, the Mike 
Miller's the 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 Randy Foy, by the way. I forgot about that guy, huh? You know, Randy Foy, uh, Corey Brewer, and Kevin Love. Let's hope this group can do something different. We gotta hope for the best, but that's where we stand right now. Um, that was a very long segment segment because that was a very in depth, very big article, and uh, I hope you enjoyed what you heard. And um, of course, let me know what you think on the SportsStuff.com. There's a message board that says Timberwolves Explosion. So definitely post some any type of comment on there, being that the phone line is down. Um, like to hear from you. But with that, I'm going to take a quick break, and we will return. Here on the SportsStuff.com, get on board the Viking ship with Purple Mafia. We will talk about the new Purple People Eaters and the best running back in the NFL, Adrian Peterson. This team is ready to make a move forward. Purple Mafia is available on the SportsStuff.com, along with iTunes and Mediafly. Simply download and listen to the most honest and passionate Vikings coverage. And we are back here on Timberwolves Explosion. Of course, that was Purple Mafia, my Minnesota Vikings podcast that is doing quite well. And again, I thank all you listeners that may be a part of the uh, fan base for that show. Thank you always. Now, very quickly, we also are getting into some more talk here. Now, first of all, Craig Smith, of course, hurt his knee not too long ago and was said to be out, oh, was to be reevaluated in six to eight weeks, and that's a shame. But there's talk that the uh, the rehab is going well, and there is a little... Uh, deal on the Timberwolves official website, a little conversation where, oh, uh, Mike Trudell, the Wolves reporter, hey, that's my job. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Mike Trudell, uh, the Wolves reporter on Timberwolves.com, had a conversation with him. Click on that. Do check it out. But uh, Craig Smith sounding very encouraged. And, uh, of course, Marcus, the forecaster, my buddy, a big fan of Craig Smith. Uh, of course, Marcus, forecaster, may be on this show very soon. And I hope he will be to be to co-host a few shows, be a guest, whatever. He's a NBA guru, and I think he'll like what he has to say. But yeah, the Rhino Craig Smith. It's a bummer that he he pretty much got hurt right after he signed that contract, so that figures. But uh, that's why I was wondering where the heck he was in those summer league games. All of a sudden, he just was gone after playing a little bit in one of the games. So uh, injuries do happen, and that's part of life, and that sucks. Now, super quick, now i got to throw this in, TimberwolvesPress.com. TimberwolvesPress.com. Now, if you're listening out there, you know, cool guy. I came across this site not too long ago from uh, the ESPN uh, message boards for the Timberwolves, of course, the Timberwolves page. Came across him not too long um, not too long ago. He does a really cool website. Of course, I mentioned TimberwolvesPress.com. And he actually, he is the one locally who broke the O.J. Mayo-Kevin Love trade. So that was really cool. And uh, he has definitely every reason in the world, every right in the world to be proud of that. That was a good job. I remember just looking at that thinking, hmm, that's interesting. It just can't be possible, can it? But, yeah, it was. He was right. Um, he's reporting that there is a, you know, there's a little possibility of a sign-in trade for Ben Gordon. He says, with the recent news that Chicago and Ben Gordon are still far apart in contract negotiations, the Timberwolves could explore a possible trade with the Bulls that Bulls that would bring Gordon over in a sign and trade. In exchange, the T-Wolves would give up a few draft picks and one or two players like Brewer, McCants, or Carney. Um, yeah, that'd be okay. That'd be cool. The only problem is, uh, to me, Ben Gordon will would present a defensive liability. He is a very undersized shooting guard. He is not a point guard. Uh, I don't know about if you want Randy Foy and Ben Gordon in your backcourt. Uh, he's a very, very talented player, though, Ben Gordon. And he could come off the bench, too. I mean, he's played that role very well in Chicago. Might end up being his role here if we were to do that. Uh, I say he's probably not in our plans, but that's just my opinion. Um, definitely a good find though good thoughts there 
by Timberwolves Press. Definitely appreciate that. And, uh, yeah, do check out that website. He does a good job. Now, with that also, real quick, some more transaction talk. And literally, this, this came out, oh, right when I was about, right when I was prepping for the show here tonight. Maurice Williams, Mo Williams, also his name, and no, not to be confused with the former Viking running back. Um, he headlined the sixth player three team trade. Mo Williams is headed to the Cleveland Cavaliers as they are finally getting help for LeBron James. Now, this trade very much helps the Cleveland Cavaliers obviously, as it gives them another dynamic player. Um, the rest of the deal, just a bunch of spare parts, though, unfortunately. Now, of course, the Oklahoma City team. So, yeah, it was the Milwaukee Bucks and the Oklahoma City blank, you know, <laughs> the invisible. The Oklahoma City invisible, I guess I'll call them for now, as they have no name yet, though there's lots of talk about them being the Barons or the Thunder. It appears those are the two front runners. Now, of course, uh, let's get this going. In exchange for Williams, who averaged 17.2 points per game last season in the first year of a six-year, 51.5 million contract, the Bucks receive Damon Jones, oh goody, DJ, along with Luke Ridnar and a former or forward Adrian Griffin from Oklahoma City. So basically, they get a bunch of uh, solid players. Nothing spectacular. Jones gonna hit the three. Ridnar is a nice passer. Adrian Griffin. Mm, Okay. Uh, Oklahoma City gets Desmond Mason from Milwaukee. So, all righty then. Uh, so he's going back to the Sonics. No, I'm kidding. That's But that's, yeah, that's the franchise he started on. Of course, they're no longer the Sonics. And, uh, yeah, Joe Smith is also going to the Oklahoma City uh, Invisible. So it's an interesting trade. Of course, the it makes the Cavaliers more formidable. And I like that part of the trade. I like that a lot because... Not because I'm a Cavs fan, because I'm not, but I'm a basketball fan. And uh, the Cavaliers becoming an entertaining team, but just, you know, of course, there's just not been a major sidekick for LeBron. Uh, no guarantee that Maurice Williams will be that, but he at least has a shot to become that. I mean, there's at least he's at least close, so that's good news in that sense. So the old uh, T.J. Ford, Maurice Williams, Duo, like the two point guards, whatever from Milwaukee. How you figured they trade one? Well, now they're both gone, so that's the end of that. Uh, so the uh, Bucks have Damon Jones, Tyron Lue, and Luke Redna, Ridnar as their main point guards. So that should be very interesting. I would assume Luke Ridnar would be the guy out of that group. Jones, of course, a nice three point specialist. Lue, a defensive specialist. Oh goody! Of course, they were the ones that wound up with Joe Alexander in the draft, and uh, we're happy for him. We'll just see what happens there. With that, we're going to take another quick quick break and return for one final segment. Here on the sportstuff.com, we're toughing up on Brave the Wild with Paladino. Join me, Paladino, as we brave the Minnesota Wild Hockey Club on our way to the playoffs. We're available on the sportstuff.com and iTunes. The boogeyman Derek Bugard says you'd better listen or he just might drop the gloves. Call up your courage and brave the wild with your buddy, Paladino Joey. And we are back for one final segment here on Timberwolves Explosion. Again, this is episode number one. You are listening to the original, the classic. But uh, anyhow, that was Brave the Wild. Not Brave the Wild with Pellet, you know, just Brave the Wild. We're going to leave it at that. Um, that's the other half of Paladino you know, Live that split up, you know, because I wanted two shows, two new shows, each with a one-team identity, and uh, there they are. Hockey fans, do check it out. Of course, available on thesportstuff.com and iTunes. Episode number one for that show should be coming out fairly shortly, at least at the very latest within the next week. Um, All righty then. Now, we are here for our final segment, and with that, we are going to involve TSS with this one. Now, I put a poll on thesportstuff.com, the little boards, the message boards on there, of course, you have to be a member to be able to uh, go on the boards and uh, 
Well, you can go on and read them, but, you, but for you to participate, and we want you to, of course, sign up. And uh, on the poll, the question is, who was the biggest free agent signing for the Wolves? And, of course, there were three choices. As the Wolves, all of them were re-signed, of course, members of the team last year. Ryan Gomes, Sebastian Telfer, or Craig Smith? Now, um, for me, I picked Ryan Gomes because I, if you listen to Pelagino Live, you could tell I'm pretty infatuated with this guy. As uh, he is like he, he reminds me of a Shane Battier type, the kind of guy who just absolutely gets it done for you. You know, a beautiful line, the kind of line that, like this guy is a multi-dimensional player that gets it done. He'll he'll rebound, he'll hit threes, but at the same time he'll be a good teammate. He'll pass. He'll he'll play solid defense. Um, Ryan Gomes is the kind of guy you want in your team. He is well spoken. He is a team captain type. He's not the captain yet, but I could see him becoming one of the uh, alternates at least. Uh, could be Al Jefferson's job. Could be Foy's job to be the official captain. We'll see what happens. Uh, Kevin Love could be another alternate potential. So, um, but yeah, Ryan Gomes to me is the guy out of that group, and that's why they gave him a potentially longer deal. Of course, team option. Yeah, the first two years guaranteed. Team option for the third year. Team option for the fourth year. Player option for the fifth year. So um, we're going to have to see what happens. It could go anywhere from two to five years. And, uh, yeah, I'm thrilled to have it back. As I am actually happy to have the other two back. Just not sure how crowded it makes the front court having both of them, along with Kevin Love. Don't forget about that. So we'll see what happens. Could be another trade on the way. Maybe that Ben Gordon thing happens. Who knows? Who knows? Maybe Craig Smith is going to Chicago. But, uh, yeah, that, of course, that nothing is eminent on that. It's more of an idea. And, of course, it's a good idea. It adds more material to any Timberwolves show host or to any uh, anybody that just wants something to, to chew on. And I'm offering you that as well. Now, I want to wish all of you a excellent, excellent week. And um, just real quick, if you could like to, shoot me an email, paladinolive at yahoo.com, paladinolive at yahoo.com. Of course, I also have a YouTube to check out Wolves videos, uh, video game reviews, and, you know, Viking sports, whatever. It is YouTube.com forward slash Palette and Joe. YouTube.com forward slash Palette and Joe. Again, for TSS, I apologize that there is no voicemail line right now, but that will be up and running again soon. As Dylan is a hardworking individual, just like myself, and uh, there's only so much time in the day and so much time he can allot to do anything. So life is life. And I want to wish all of you a good week. And thank you all for listening, and I hope to bring you a lot of fun here on Timberwolves Explosion. Definitely interact with me. Let's talk NBA. It is the best sport in the world, and we'll talk to you soon. Take care. (laughs) 